Hello, every creature. Welcome to BabsCon, Babs Lab Online, where we're about to start some yoga. So to get started, please stay safe. Only exercise if you're able to, and feel free to watch if you can't exercise. This will be adjusted to limitations, so whatever you need, I hope you find today. With that, let's get going. Again, every creature, welcome. This is Babs Lab, and I'm Tree Hugger, here to host some Zen bliss as we get ready to have fun here. I will be monitoring the chat both on Twitch and on Discord. So if you have anything, any questions, just remember it's all groovy. So to get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit about yoga. First off, this is free relaxation and it draws on yoga, but you can do anything that you need. This is all for you. <laughs> so to get started again, just wear loose clothing, have some water nearby and try to cultivate relaxation. I will also make sure to give you some energy by the end so that you can enjoy the entire weekend of fun or fuff, depending on whichever you prefer because whatever way we go, it's all good. As we go into this, we're gonna start with some calming auditory therapy that really worked well for the smooths. I always feel at peace when I'm bathed in positive vibes. So to get started, find a comfortable seat and see if you can get calmed down using some sonic bliss. Ready? Um. Let the vibrations penetrate your energy fields. This is all about breathing and letting go. And I hope that you find that throughout the next 45 minutes. So now that we've gotten started, let's go into our physical practice. Again, don't go beyond where your body can go today. Make sure to modify anything, and at any time, if you need to come back to that auditory bliss or your breathing, just stay there. Never do anything uncomfortable. This is all about you finding your own personal zen. And speaking of zen, this is Designs for Zen, and I am Riftwing Designs everywhere, so please give me a follow. I am everywhere you want, and also there's this nice little playlist down here. If you haven't put it on yet, definitely check it out. It's got some My Little Pony music that's totally blissful. Or you can play anything else that your heart desires. This is all about you having fun. So let's get going. To begin with, we're going to go into an easy seat. If you have a yoga mat and you want to use that yoga mat, go right ahead. And if you have a chair, that's fine too. Again, you can do anything in your yoga practice. Make this yours. An easy seat is all about being comfortable wherever you are making sure your shoulders are back and down. This is about posture, my little creatures. Remember that you want to find that comfortable straight back, shoulders back again at your own limitations. And if you want to sit on the ground, if you are one of those yogis that can do all the asanas, please use your mats as well. To begin with, we're going to set an intention. An intention is the guide that will take you through the entire practice and it's really meant to help you to ground and find that center. So to start off with Fluttershy, met me at a trip to the Breezies, and you know that the preservation of rare creatures is great. Remember that everyone is valuable and loved. So if you want for this one, you can cultivate relaxation or you can make an intention of you are loved. So if you want to say your intention, say it. And if you're with me, together, let's say I am loved. One more time. I am loved. And then a deep breath in. And yoga always starts with an OM. So 
let's start now just by moving your neck back and forth slowly. Don't do full circles, just relax. Let the groove come in as you start to just roll your neck around. Finding any spaces that are tight. You can even rub it if it feels good. Just let those kinks out. Yeah, bliss out here. A lot of yoga really is just stretching, but there's also meditation and finding yourself. The poses are only a part of yoga. The breath is a big part. The mind is an even bigger part. So let's come back to stillness and take a deep breath in and let it go. Take another one in, feeling it from your belly. Yeah, if you can do those belly breaths and take it from the tightness of your shoulders and open up the chest. If that's all you do as you're watching right now, that is amazing and you are totally a yogi. Now we're going to do some spine stretches. So to start off with, we're going to inhale, arms up, and then exhale, twist a little. There you go. Inhale up, exhale, twist the other way. Follow your breath no matter where you are. Exhale, inhale up and exhale down. You will notice that oftentimes I let you go at your own speed. I can't tell you how fast or slow you need to be. If you are the tortoise or if you are rainbow dash, you have to find what works for you. So maybe you stay in one pose for a little bit, just, just twisting. Or maybe you just like to go back and forth fast and build up that energy. Again, you can make this as fast or slow as you'd like. But for Rift Wing Designs type, we do a little bit slower so that every creature can enjoy. So now that we're back at center, inhale up again. And this time we're just going to do like a smooth dance. So let it go. Notice your shoulders. Maybe you do some circles like your swing. Or maybe you just kind of woo. Relax. And then start to move your hips around too really letting go of your upper body groove out and then if you're circling in one direction notice and then try and do it the other way because balance is a very important part of yoga you need to be able to find an equal amount of stretch on each side in order to balance your body back to your breath here <sighs> fantastic you all are great yogis. Now we're going to do some cat and cow. Again, if you are a yogi that uses your mat, please go onto all fours and begin to stretch out your spine from tabletop into cat cow. And if you're with me, I'll just turn to show you. So from seated, you sit up straight and then you exhale as you bend through and inhale as you shine your chest through. Looking up, exhale and inhale. So this is what it looks like. Breathing as you exhale. Really moving your shoulders and your chest. This is cow. And then cat is with the arched back. And you've probably done these before, but they're yoga poses, so there you go. Oh, it feels so good already, doesn't it? <laughs> so now that we've warmed up, we're going to do some shoulder rolls again. This time we're going to take our hands because I know a lot of you like to use the computers. Take your fingers together and just stretch out. So it looks like this. And just breathe. Roll your shoulders back and down here again. See how nice that posture is. Good. And then if you're able to try and raise your hands up, keeping the bind, this is going to open up your chest and shoulders. If there's any pain, stop, back off. Breathe into it if you have that nice stretch. And you can even do a little back bend here. Continue to breathe. And then come back down, swooping the arms back a little bit and do a forward fold and then clasp your arms here. Really let your neck go, let your head go. 
and then come back up. Good. So those stretches there really help to open your arms and you'll notice sometimes I do little mini stretches in between. The secret to yoga is to listen to your body. So if it says that you need to do something other than what I say, don't listen to tree hugger. Listen to you because you are the most important. And going back to your intention, you are loved. All right. Now that we've done our arms and our wrists and our back and our folds, now we're gonna do our feet and toes. So if you're like little hoopsies, here we go. First off, lift up your right leg and just hug your knee in. If you are on all fours at this point, you can either do it on all fours or you can come to your back and give yourself that little back hug. <sighs> Breathe in, keep that nice straight posture. And then if you can, Grab your thigh and straighten your leg out and just give yourself a stretch here. So again, the best pose if you're on the mat is just to lay on your back for this and then just do the stretch or else you can do a down dog and kick back. Again, do what works for you, but right now we're just stretching out our legs. Okay? And see our little hoofsies here? Just give them a little wiggle. Wiggle those toes, wiggle those digits, claws. What do you got? And then do ankle rolls. Make sure you go both ways. And if it feels better to keep your knee in here, do that. Yeah. Okay. And so if you're straight, pull your knee back in. And then we're going to do a little twist over to whatever works for you. So I've got mine elevated. If you need to put it down, that's fine. If you can't do it at all, you do you. It's all about finding your bliss. I'm warming up those hips and legs. So again, this is where if you're laying down, just do that laying down twist, crossing your leg over. Go back to your breath here. And then if you can, use your hands to guide your knee wherever you are and open up so you take your knee across center and then open your hip here. So you're flexing and opening your hip, making that wide little stance. All right, this is that seat, the greedy seat guy, right? Man spread. <laughs> but it gives you a good stretch, that's for sure. Breathing here. And then pull it back in. And for those of you on your back, give your knee a little bit of hug. We're going to switch sides. So pull in your other knee and just notice how it feels. Warming up this side. Groovy. And then... Again, you have the option here to try and straighten your leg holding onto the thigh, putting your little footsie or hoofsie or claw, whatever it is, stick it out with all those toes or digits. Roll your ankle here both directions. Fantastic. You didn't think you'd be seeing so much of tree hooker's little toes, did ya? And then when you're ready, hug it back in. This time crossing over the other way. Make sure you've got your good posture. If you need to hold it up, hold it up. If you want to hold it down, let it over. Again, if you're on your back, you're doing your laying twist. Find ease here. Fantastic. And then untwist, and again, this time, guiding your knee across your body, opening up, giving yourself that wide leg stretch. Finding that little man spread, wherever it is, on your back or on your chair, sitting up straight and noticing the flexibility throughout your leg. There's nothing shameful about your body, and guess what? I can't see you, so give yourself the deepest stretch that you need. Good. And then pull it back in. All right, so we have done our legs here. And so now if there is something else you want to do, one recommendation that I have if you're seated is to try and scooch up to the front of your chair and then grab one ankle and give yourself like a little bit of, um, it's a quad stretch. So if you're on the ground, you can do um, a, a cattail or you can just stand up and do a quad stretch, but you see how it is right here. Just give yourself that. And you can do it standing too. If that's available, go for it. Where you want to do is just have a nice stretch sitting up straight. Don't lean like me. <laughs> and then go to the other side, kicking back your heel, grabbing it, and giving yourself that nice stretch. Again, doing it standing. Or if you're laying down, switching to the other side for cattail. Again, you do you. 
And if you have any other legs or warm up moves, do that now. I'm just gonna check chat to make sure every creature is okay. <laughs> I swear I'm not checking my social media because that's just not fun at all, right? Okay, we got in lunar deck text. That's where I'll be checking. So if you have any questions, go right ahead, but we are doing great. Again, if you need water, please drink, please hydrate. That's gonna be very important as you go through the whole weekend. <laughs> so now that we've warmed up, we're gonna go through the chakra yoga. It's very interesting because you'll see we've spent 15 minutes warming up. Warm ups are the most important part. Fantastic, okay. So what are chakra? I will take my little cheat sheet here because I went to the library of Twilight Sparkle to get these notes. I just knew that they were groovy. I did not know all this cool stuff about chakra. So let me come up. It's story time with Tree Hugger. Chakra are, it's a Sanskrit word meaning wheel or circle. And they are the energy centers of the body. So you may have seen diagrams where they have circles in the head and the neck and the body and the rainbow, which is perfect for us, right? So they have the rainbow, and when you look at the chakra, they're actually the spinning energy in your body. There are seven major chakra which correspond to the, the colors of the rainbow, and what we'll do is we'll go through each of those seven majors, and obviously you can go to the library too and find out a ton more about these. These release vital energy force called piranha, which is also tied to the breath, and you might have heard it in like anime as chi. So it's all the same, that energy flowing through your body and the idea behind the breathing and the and all of this yoga is to align your body, to listen to yourself and to become more of yourself. Each of the chakras govern certain things and we'll go over those together because again, I am really good at this book report thing. And each chakra represents a level. So we'll be going from the bottom level all the way to the top by the end of the hour. So to start off with, we're going to go through each chakra. I'll tell you about it and then I'll show you a pose. So again, you can do these on the chair. You can do these on your mat. And if there's any other movements that you feel aligned to that chakra, go right ahead, okay? So I'm gonna back up just a little so you can see my wonderful body. The first chakra is the root chakra. The root chakra is who you are. The term for the root chakra is I am, and it's at the base of the spine. So right here on your plot, and that's your root chakra. So give it a little touch. Just notice the base of your spine. Maybe even close your eyes. Come back to your breath, come back to the music. The color of the root chakra is red, red. It controls survival, such as financial independence and money, and also food. So if you love any of those things, you need to take care of your root chakra. Okay, so I will now show you the, the pose that we will do for the root chakra. It is warrior one. So for those of you that have your mats, if you are comfortable doing your warrior, go right ahead. There is a modified version on your chair. So warrior one standing, I'll just show you here. You may have seen it before. It looks like this. Back is at 45 degrees. Front is with the knee bent. Knee should not go past your ankle and your arms are up. But for those of you in your chair, it's the same thing. So remember, we just warmed up our legs. All you have to do is turn one direction, scooch up to the edge of your mat, and then step backwards. Let me do a little bit more for you, buddies. Like this. So wiggle around and see if you can't find something similar to a warrior. See how it goes? And notice that big stretch right through your root chakra. So inhale, arms up or wherever your arms need to be. They can be open or behind, chest shining out. Find your chakra in the side. And as you do that, the mantra is, I can't grow from an unsteady foundation. I can't grow from an unsteady foundation. Say it with me. I can't grow from an unsteady foundation. 
Now notice that foundation where your feet are touching the ground and maybe where your body is touching the chair. Breathe here, keeping those shoulders back and down. The red root chakra. And now because of balance, we have to switch to the other side. So if you're standing, switch over. And if you're seated, turn around and find your warrior one on the other side. Inhale, arms up. Squaring those hips facing forward. Breathe into it. And wherever you are, again, say with me, I can't grow from an unsteady foundation. I can't grow from an unsteady foundation. Root chakra. Are you feeling your set already? Fantastic. Now we're gonna go to the second chakra. I think I can stay here. All right, the second chakra is how about you feel about yourself. It's on your lower abdomen, two inches below your navel, right there. So again, find your hands, place them on your second chakra. This is the sacral chakra. The color is orange. It controls your sense of abundance, well-being. Of course, it controls pleasure and sexuality. You'll notice that some of these totally tie into things that we associate there, and that's because it's rooted in history. Again, please look up the full history. I cannot go through that today, but this is your second sacral chakra, orange. So for this pose, we're gonna do side angle, extended side angle. So we're gonna go back to our first warrior. And remember we were here, so for extended side angle, what you do is you place the arm of the same leg that's facing out, and then you sweep the other arm over. And you can rotate your chest if that feels good. This is extended side angle. And if you're standing, maybe you wanna do a flow to get into it. However you do, find your extended side angle. And notice that it's twisting this part, your second sacral chakra, color orange. And the mantra here is, I always honor others, but not before myself. Ooh, you like that? I always honor others, but not before myself. Say it one more time. I always honor others, but not before myself. And then lower that arm that's extended out. Come back up through center, using your hips to lift up and then transition to the other side. Going first into your warrior maybe, to open up those hips. Your front arm that's the same side as the bent knee forward comes down and just rests there. And then sweep your other arm forward, extended side angle, other side. We'll do our mantra again. I always honor others before myself. <laughs> Did you catch that? I said it wrong. You should always honor others, but not before myself. I always honor others, but not before myself. One more time. I always honor others, but not before myself. And that's a tough one to do, but that guides so much of your life. Again, lower that extended arm. Come back up, lifting through center, and come back. Now this one, you might have felt a little bit of a twist, so if it works for you, you might wanna go through a chair twist here. One side or the other, again, and if you're on your mat, do what you need to, just to unwind. Maybe go through a flow here. And again, make sure to drink some water if you need it. All right, every creature, we've got a few more to do. First off, we're going to do our solar plexus chakra. So that's like around where your hips are. Okay, so just take your hands and notice your solar plexus. This is the third chakra. It's on how you think and take actions. It's I do. It's I do. The color is yellow, just like Fluttershy. All right, the mantra, um, actually, it controls self-worth, self-confidence, and self-esteem. So you know that Riffling Designs really values self-worth, 
self-confidence and self-esteem. So this is a very strong chakra for me. For this one, if you are on your mat, the best pose to do for it is going to be a backbend like boat. So maybe you get on your belly transitioning through a flow to lower yourself down and then get into your boat or maybe a superman or a locust. If you're with me on your chair, we're going to do leg lifts just like we did at the beginning. So focus on that solar plexus area, your abdomen. We're first going to lift up our right leg and then exhale down. Okay, left, just like you're marching in place. And if you need to hold your chair for stability, do that. And then maybe as you have stability, you start to lift and then extend your leg and then lower and extend the other leg and do it at your own pace, feeling the stretch, maybe even holding your legs up and out. And as we're doing that, the mantra for the third solar plexus chakra, again, yellow, is self-love starts when I accept all parts of myself. Self-love starts when I accept all parts of myself. And say it with me, self-love starts when I accept all parts of myself. It's so true. Accept all parts of yourself. Accept yourself. That's what Brass Knuckles always says. Do a couple more here. Finding that stretch, maybe even opening your hips if you want. If you're doing boat, give yourself one last big old boat. Noticing that solar plexus and that abs as you lift. And now if you're in your chair, maybe we're gonna do a double leg lift, really just to pull in our core. So hold yourself stable, make sure you're not in a rolly wheelie chair. And then exhale, lift up both legs, try and hold them. Oh, I'm shaking. Breathe. Three, two, and one. Ooh, all right, every creature. Wow, that was the yellow third solar plexus chakra. <laughs> Let's go on to our next one, the fourth one. How you love yourself and others. This is the fourth chakra. I love. Perfect for us, right? So for this one, it's the heart, obviously. Love, heart, makes sense. The color, interestingly, is green. Green like the smooths, right? So green is the color of the heart chakra. Just place your hands in your heart. Come back to your breath here. Maybe come back to your intention. I am loved. Look at how we did that, huh? Breathe nice and steady. For this one, we're going to be doing a back bend. So if you are able to do bridge and you have your mat, feel free. You can also do camel or any other back bend that talks to you. We're going to do a seated back bend. So if you're with me, again, sit up straight at the edge of your chair, shoulders back. And the first thing that we're going to do is place our hands on the backs of our hips here and just pull your elbows together. You want them to almost be like chicken wings pulling together here. So you're seated, legs should be flat, knees 90 degrees, trying to pull your elbows and shining your chest forward. And then maybe you do a little back bend. And if you can, you can look up, but the last thing you do is look up. Breathe. And if you put your head back, if you have to come back, tuck your chin first, but you can stay in that back bend as I go through our mantra. So for that back bend, this is again, I love. When I love myself, loving others comes easily. When I love myself, loving others comes easily. Say it with me one more time. When I love myself, Loving others comes easily. And again, as you come out, make sure to tuck your chin, keep your neck safe, and then straighten up. And if you want to here, you can do a forward fold or any other movements just to balance out, exhaling as you fold, and then release your head and neck. When I love myself, loving others comes easily. 
and then inhale, come back to center. One other thing I did not mention is that this chakra also is all about inner peace. So if you haven't yet found your Zen, focus on the heart chakra when you need to relax. Fantastic. Guess what? We're going on to our next chakra now, the fifth chakra. This is how you express yourself. I speak. The fifth chakra is the throat chakra. So place your hand on your throat. The throat is a place of vulnerability, right? If there's predators, you're like, oh my gosh, don't catch me, right? But it's also a place of strength. So the throat chakra is turquoise, like a light blue, like a rainbow dashy blue. And so this one controls communication, right? It's the throat. And it also controls self-expression and your truth. So if you lie and you get sick and it's in the throat, it could be because your chakra is blocked. Again, I'm not saying this is a fact. I'm just saying that some people believe that if you need to clear your chakra, it might help you with any throat issues. But again, consult your medical professional. They always know best. So for this one, it is the throat chakra, the fifth chakra, I speak. We're gonna do our cat cows again, or you could do a crescent lunge. So if you're standing, definitely try and do that crescent lunge where you have maybe a knee down and you're just doing that little mini back bend, opening and exposing your throat. And for us, we've done our cat and cow. So what we're gonna do again is sit up straight and you do your cat exhaling. And then when you inhale, stay there a little bit longer, really try and lift your chin a little bit here. And just do really slow cat cows. And if you're doing a crescent lunge, take some time there, the first one. The mantra is, I speak my truth always. I speak my truth always. Say it with me. I speak my truth always. If you're in your crescent lunge, switch sides. If you're with me, continue to breathe, exhaling as you're folding over. Inhale as you look up. Feel that chest and neck open. The mantra again, I speak my truth always. I speak my truth always. One more time. <sighs> Don't you just feel cleansed by just doing that chakra movement? So come on back to center and find it your breath maybe placing your hands on the chakra that has spoken the most to you. I'm gonna check our chat one more time, just making sure that everything is all right here. Element Rave, absolutely, there's tons of history for you all to look up. Yes, hail, hydrate, definitely get your water right now. Shy Fire, welcome, digital draw as well. So glad to see you all here. All right, next one is the intuition. So we've done all of the body. The sixth chakra is the third eye, the right, the center of your forehead here. And maybe some of you do have a third eye, which is awesome. Then you're already into your sixth chakra. This is I see. It's indigo, that dark blue, purple. And this one is going to be child's pose. So if you're on your mat and you wanna do a few flows, go right ahead and then find yourself in child's pose. This controls intuition, imagination, and wisdom. So if your chakra is blocked in your head and you can't be creative, you've got a block of some sort, whether it's drawing, artistic, maybe thinking, maybe you're just feeling fuzzy, maybe try and clear out the third chakra. Um, one of the questions that I've gotten is, can you use crystals or sage or other incense? If those things speak to you, yes. And there are different crystals and different herbs that go for each of these chakra too. So you can find specific crystals and herbs that will help you to clear out your sixth chakra. And especially if they're colored like with that indico color, that might help. Again, this is totally just if it works for you, it's not like rote. Well, it is rote actually, but you know what I'm saying. Definitely it's not like the totally um, professional world. This is finding yourself and your spirituality through yoga. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, but that's why we're here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do our sixth chakra. Again, find yourself into child's pose if you are on your mat. For us, it's going to be a forward fold. And I'm going to read the mantra. So all you have to do again is release yourself down. Maybe even here, I'll show you. When you're folding over, you can hold your ankles 
or even if you've got these little sturdy sticks, you can pull here and it might help you to really, really relax. Wherever you are in your forward fold, let your head down, maybe even move your neck around because you really want to release that third eye and get it so that it is grounded. So when you're in your fold here, the mantra is, I am open to exploring what can't be seen. I am open to exploring what can't be seen. Say it with me. I am open to exploring what can't be seen. And just hold this pose and breathe. I am open to exploring what cannot be seen. And when you're ready, you can come out of your child's pose. At this point, for those of you on the mat, we're going to be doing one last pose and then Savasana. So if you have any other poses that you have in your yoga practice, please do them now as we get ready to go through our last chakra. For those of you on the mat, again, sit up straight here. The seventh chakra is connecting to the divine, whatever your divine is. That's the interesting part about yoga is that it's not a spirituality, it's not a religion but it does connect to the divine, whatever your divine is. And there are connections to specific religions, but this is not in fact a religious practice, unless you want it to be, and that's your yoga and not my yoga. So find whatever works for you. So if you connect with the divine, that's great. You can do that right here. And the phrase for the seventh chakra is I understand. It's the crown of your head, the top of your head. It's the radiation of your light. I need to show you the top of my head. The radiation of your light energy as it enters the rest of the universe. That's the crown. And as the crown, it's white, which is really great because the light really makes my crown look like it's already white when it's not, but that's okay. It's white. <laughs> and we're going to be doing uh, inversion. So for those of you on the mat, if you have headstand or if you want to do legs up the wall or if you have um, a plow or any other sort of in head, uh, headstand, you can do that. What it controls is the inner and outer beauty, right? So we all know that your truth is that you have to find your own inner beauty and everyone is perfect if you accept yourself. Oftentimes that doesn't happen and that could be that your crown chakra is blocked or that you're taking other people's thoughts instead of your own. And when that happens, it doesn't allow you to enter the whole cosmic universe. So if that is true, again, that spiritual connection you have to remember to clear your seventh chakra. <laughs> so to do that, we're going to go into a type of inversion. And I'm going to tell you what the mantra is. It's an, I am a vessel for love and light. So we'll say that a few times. Once we get set up, I'll show you three options and whichever you like, stay in it. Okay. So the first one is just legs up. So if you have another chair or a desk, yeah, just put your legs up. Okay, that's it. Find comfort. The idea is when your feet are off the ground, you feel more relaxed. So if this is what you want to do, just keep your feet off the ground. Find a nice relaxed position, whether it's an ottoman or you know your favorite gamer chair. The second option is to Let's see, I know I had two, I had three options. The second option is um, if you have a wall or a bed or a chair, but just one chair, this is, this is correct, and you're able to get on the ground safely, and maybe you want to have a pillow or a blanket or something soft to lay on here. When you get down on the ground safely, you can lay down and then lift up your legs and put them on the chair and then let yourself go so this is legs on the chair you can do it on a couch on a bed anything that's about the height of your hips here even if you stack some pillows so this is legs on the chair which you can use and then the third option is again if you have that flat wall to do legs up the wall so you scooch next to the wall then you rotate and you let your legs go up the wall. 
And then your arms can go out, up, over, whatever's comfortable for you. So whichever of these positions you've found, we're gonna stay here for about two minutes. And I'm gonna come back up to tell you all the cheat sheets. All right. So now that you've found that comfy pose, making sure that your crown chakra is getting grounded and your feet are up for safety and comfort. From here, our mantra, I am a vessel for love and light. I am a vessel for love and light. Say it with me. I am a vessel for love and light. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to give you a minute of silence. Don't worry, I'll call you back out of it, but just relax into this pose. Focus on the crown chakra. Think of the color white. Think about that spiritual connection, if that means something to you. And remember that you are a vessel for love and light. And there we go. How did that feel? So you can stay in this position if you like. If this is blissing you out to the greatest extent, you stay right there. What we're gonna do next is called Savasana, corpse pose of all things. And what it means is it's the end of yoga. I call it nap time. <laughs> this is where we get to relax. So I'm gonna come on up so you can hear my beautiful voice. I saw the chat. We've got some great folks blessing out there too. So again, thank you for being here. As we get ready for our savasana, just again to let you know, this is where you relax. Where if you have not found that bliss and zen, you connect with your body. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take you through a meditation to give you some energy and maybe to give you something to think about as you're going forward throughout the convention. So what we're gonna do is again, if you are in that nice relaxed pose, stay right there. If there is something else that speaks to you, you can do that. Um, for those of you that have a mat or really any of you, you can either find a nice relaxed position when you're seated or you can lay on your back completely flat, arms out, legs out. So find that savasana, that relaxed pose that works for you. Your eyes should find their way to be closed. Again, make sure you have any blankets and anything you need to be comfortable, but start to close your eyes. Maybe even lower the lights a little bit to get that nice groovy mood. Take a long, slow, deep breath through your nose and hold it for just a moment. Then exhale it through your mouth. Take another slow breath in through your nose, filling your lungs completely. Then exhale through your mouth and release. Breathing at your own pace. 
eyes are closed. Begin to imagine releasing any last tension, any last stress from your body, let it go. Push it out with your breath. Every inhale, bringing in that relaxation and every exhale, letting it go. Inhale in and release any last tension. Feel yourself relaxing more and more with every breath. And with your eyes closed, I'm taking you through a gutted, a guided exercise. If it's not comfortable for you, feel free to meet me and just have your quiet savasana. But if you're with me, we'll do a little guided meditation. So again, with your eyes closed, imagine that you are in the countryside. Perhaps it's in Equestria, standing on a bridge that crosses over a river and looks over a green field. Overhead, the sky is blue and dotted with fluffy clouds, pegasi frolicking. The spring sun beams down and its rays feel warming and healing. From that bridge you're standing on, look out and see that there is a field, but there is an edge of the field as well. That's a forest. And that forest is calling your attention. Turn to it and begin to walk down the bridge towards the forest. As your foot touches the first step, a wave of blissful tranquility passes through your entire body. And you arrive at the second step, feeling calm and relaxed. You step a third time, sliding deeper into relaxation. And with the fourth step down, you feel even more relaxed. And now you take the fifth and final step you feel completely safe and completely relaxed. Continue to walk towards that old forest with each step bringing more calm and relaxation. As you get to the forest, you notice it smells of pine and oak and brimming with new life. The birds are chirping, the butterflies are flying, the breezes are breezing by. The shrubs bristle with those little creatures. And you notice a path go through the forest and begin to walk it. With every step you take, notice how you feel increasingly refreshed and energized by the animals all around you. Walking feels effortless, like you're gliding. Any tension or tiredness just fade away and you're ready for what comes next. You notice how the trees soar up and dapple and there's sunlight coming down on your face through the trees, making the leaves glow a bright green. The leaves whisper in the breeze and the sunlight sparkles through, bringing warmth to your body. Walk for as long as you wish and notice the animals and creatures who pop up to say hello. In this forest, there is a creature that wants to talk to you. What creature has come to you now? You may speak to them if you want and listen intently to what they have to say. They have a message for you. Listen now. Listen to the creature and what it has to say for you. Just a few more moments, continue your conversation.
And as you're ready, notice that it's time to say farewell. Do that in whichever way is comfortable for both of you. Thank that creature for their time and their insight. And know that they'll be here in this forest at any time if you want to come back and share that knowledge, wisdom, and love. And maybe give them a big hug. Coming back to that intention, I am loved. And with those final farewells, turn around and notice the path you took to get here. Begin to retrace your steps through the forest, not feeling sad about the departure, but feeling thankful and energized that you were able to meet this creature. And look out at the meadow again. Notice there's life everywhere. The trees and the pathway lead to the edge of the forest. Notice your energy and resourcefulness. Notice how it's grown, how you feel more energetic. You feel ready for whatever comes next. And as you see the expanse of green as the meadow opens in front of you, maybe turn around and just look at that path one more time with thankfulness and know that you can come back here again at any time to find that insight and relaxation. And then turn back to the meadow and see the bridge that brought you here. As you walk back towards that bridge, maybe notice if there's any other things that call out to you, flowers or creatures. Acknowledge them, talk to them, thank them. Maybe smell the flowers or breathe in, feel the breeze on your body. Commune with nature as you walk back towards the bridge. And then there it is, the bridge in front of you. You turn to it, ready for your journey home. And with this, your foot touches the first step and you notice you feel completely safe and completely relaxed. The second step, begin to notice how relaxed your mind feels. Step a third time and notice your physical body and how relaxed your feet and legs are. Now take that fourth step, feeling calm and relaxed throughout your whole body. And on your fifth and final step, take that calmness and carry it with you through your breath, taking a deep breath in and let it go. Setting that feeling of relaxation in your memory as you fully return to the physical world, energized and ready for the day ahead. Slowly bring your awareness back to you. Become aware of your physical body and your surroundings, noticing what you feel underneath you, noticing what you hear around you. And once you fully come back to the earth, Take that another deep breath in and maybe just go into a really big stretch. Waking up, really feeling energized for the rest of Babs Lab. And then maybe even rub your hands together in front of you and then rest them gently on your eyes. Just taking that deep breath in and enjoying those last few moments in your relaxed position. And wherever you are, once you're done with that, Release your hands down, and if you're laying down, you can roll to one side, or if you're seated, just stay wherever you are. I wanted to say one last thing that was very important that my uh, I said in Make New Friends But Keep Discord. Again, I meet a lot of different creatures, each one of them perfect and unique, right? So take the piece of this session, remember that you are loved, and remember that you can always be yourself. These chakra are here for you. They're here to help you connect with yourself. So please look at ways to connect further. And as we go through the rest of your day again, just express gratitude and know that you are worth it. 
So again, you can continue to rest if you feel like you need to, but if you're not, come back to a gentle seat, come back up, come back to the real world. You've done it, you've gone through 50 minutes of yoga, which means that we have five minutes left together. So what we're gonna do is inhale, arms up, and then bring them together over your head. Exhale, draw them down. Oh, one more time. Inhale up, exhale. Oh, one more just for fun. And as Tree Hugger, I am Riftwing Designs, and you can find me everywhere as at Riftwing Designs.